Hello, Wellness Tribe. Welcome to your last class. Can you believe that our summer has flown by? Welcome to your practice today. This will be kind of a mixture of a little bit of yang and yin. So we'll have some things that, you know, heat us up just a little bit, but also have some really good um, poses that unwind us. And, and I'm kind of titling it hip hypnotic, okay? Because it's going to be kind of hypnotic. We're going to focus a little bit on the hips, which helps to release the back. So props that may be helpful today are one block and a strap if you have it. And I want you to come down to lie on your back to start. And you're going to start in kind of a sukhasana position. I don't really care which shin is in front, but pick a shin where you're crossing more if you can at the mid shin. So your feet are under your knees and you're laying back. And then you're going to have a hand on the heart and the belly. Now, again, you can have either shin in front. If you are just crazy open, you could do a double pigeon form. That is not happening right now for me. I mean, it feels great, but I feel like I would get a little bit antsy in a short period of time to start my practice that way. But some of you, you may have really open hips. And so this does nothing in the realm of your hips. And so you need to find a pose that feels a little bit more um, sensation. So maybe you pick that double pigeon form. And then go ahead and take a hand on the heart and a hand on the abdomen. And let your eyes, if it's comfortable, let your eyes close. And start to notice the sound of your breathing. The rhythm of your breath. And as you focus on the breath and we take a moment to honor this last class, it brought me back to the remembrance of the word Kula. And some of you are in Carbondale, Colorado, where I used to live, and there is the Kula Yoga Studio. And in case you have forgotten, or maybe you've never heard the word Kula, K-U-L-A, Kula is defined as a community of the heart. And this community, this summer wellness tribe, is a remarkable kula of our individual qualities that blend together to reveal an atmosphere of both understanding and appreciation. Even though we can't see each other, even though we may be miles and miles apart, and our body itself is like a kula, a gathering of forces in each of us that is wondrous and complex. And both of these environments provide us with a sense of stability as well as a sense of freedom for whoever we are. And our attentive presence in any kula is integral. Each of us is an aspect of something greater than the sum of its parts, something sacred. Within which we find this familiarity and support to simultaneously be who we are and yet to transform and to grow. bringing this energy to this class rather than just learning poses as a means to create that presence we're going to practice looking within ourselves in our practice to reveal this inner majesty this inner alchemy where transformation begins. So take a moment with your hand on your heart. 
and set an intention. And my intention for us today is to really feel that sense of connecting that sense of kula, this community we have built together of the heart. And even if you don't know one person that is a part of this group, just know that you are a part of something big and that you are contributing in your own way. Good, and then you're gonna take your shins and now just for a couple of breaths, I want you to put your other shin in front. So whichever shin you had, let's switch it up now. And as you breathe in, I want you to take your arms over your head. Your back will arch a bit. And as you exhale, I want you to cactus your arms. Let your forearms rest on the ground. Inhale, reach your arms over your head. Can you feel the hip flexors opening and yet simultaneously draw your tailbone down just a little bit more, lengthen it. Exhaling, cactus your arms. One more time, inhale. This time, cactus your arms, but hover them off the ground. Feel your shoulders on the back, maybe even Kind of push one side at a time and wiggle them in a little bit so you feel like that connection to the back of the heart. Draw your low belly in and now take your right arm over your left and just, uh, you might even close your eyes, feel your shoulder blades protract now and move away from each other. You may do a single wrap, you may do a double wrap. Hmm. Maybe reach your fingertips over your head a little higher Or maybe draw your elbows and bring them in towards your chest and see where you get the greatest release and just stay there for an extra breath or so. Now a great mantra just to help bring us together and to also activate our own inner power is the mantra Sat, S-A-T, Nam, N-A-M, Sat, Nam. So as you inhale, you might invite that mantra, open the chest as you exhale, nam, to help your energy in this present moment stay more clear. Sometimes bringing in a mantra is helpful. If it's not, just breathe and just stay with your focus on your breath. Again, playing around a little bit. If you lift fingertips up a little more or draw them in, elbows towards your chest. You get a little bit more sensation. Remember, double pigeon is an option in this reclined form if you're more open here. Good, yogis. Reach your arms over your head. And now set your feet to the floor for the moment. Feet are going to be hip width apart. Take your hands and clasp them behind the back of your head. Your elbows are wide. Take an inhale, and I want you to actively feel like you are arching your back into cow. So over-exaggerate the arch. And then exhale, round the back. Lift your head and chest up. Bring your elbows so they're shoulder distance apart, shoulder blades off the ground. Now you've got a cat back. Inhale, you'll come all the way back down. Actually push your outer elbows down. And again, overemphasize your arch. And then exhale, curl up. So it's like core cat cow. <laughs> I know this part isn't is, is exactly hypnotic, but exhale. It really helps to flex and extend our spine, which helps our posture. Inhale, open. Shoulder blades on the back. They're retracting in. And then exhale as you round. They protract. They pull off and away from each other. Inhale, open. Arch, arch, exhale, round, round, inhale, sat, exhale, nam. One more time, breathe in, 
arch. It's hard for me to remember to arch, so that maybe for you to exhale. Good. Inhale. Release the head down. Recactus your arms. Keep your legs bent, and as you inhale, you're going to take just your right leg and open it as though you've almost got a weight, um, kind of restricting your knee from opening into a half bottle kanasana. So start to let your right knee open, but imagine there's some resistance. So, so maybe somebody's trying to push your knee back up to the top, and so you can really feel the inner part of the hip working, and then bring it back up. So inhale, opening. Exhale. And the same thing. Imagine someone's pushing on the inner knee so it doesn't just fly right up. It takes a little bit of um, paying attention. Inhale, open. And again, don't try not to let it just flop down and bring it back up. I encourage you to do this. We're only going to do it about four or five times. But if you could, you could pause this and do it about 8 to 10. What I love to see is just, oh, the light side, left side of my sacrum gets light as the knee opens. I notice all the muscles, bring it back up as you exhale, that are having to connect and collaborate to get the knee to open. All right, let's switch sides. Arms are cactus, letting the left knee open as you breathe in. Sat. Exhale. Maybe you're using the mantra. Maybe just the presence of paying attention and noticing all that's happening in your own body. Remember, imagine a weight. It's not just dropping open and it isn't just flying back up. Take your time. Inhaling. I get a little quiver. It's not a hard movement, but I get a quiver as I really imagine that sandbag resisting my leg to bring it up and to open it down. Last two. Slowing down sometimes is one of the most challenging things. And also, it's really easy to underestimate the simple. Okay, so this seems like a relatively simple movement, nothing too complex here. And sometimes I, we will just bypass these things because we think, well, what's really happening here? It's so, so simple, but it's not. When you're really doing this, I'm not kidding you, my outer hip and my inner thigh, depending which direction I'm going, is totally vibrating, starting to shake. Good. And now let your knees open, both of them, into Baddha Konasana. Your soles of your feet are together. You're going to push the soles of your feet together strongly. We're not going to come all the way up, but you're going to start to exhale and bring the knees together. Your feet, your outer feet, you're going to feel start to pull apart a little bit. That's okay. Make sure you're not feeling any pain in the knees. And when you get to a point where you're just like, I cannot go anymore, again, not letting them flop open, just with control, slowly letting them open as you inhale back up. Exhale, squeeze. So hypnotic. Squeeze. It's like your own little personal thigh master minus the equipment. Inhale, open. If you are too young to know what I'm talking about, I need you to go look it up later. Squeeze, bring it back up. Open. Last two, exhale, squeeze. Inhale, open. Last time, exhale. <clears throat> Slow. Imagine again, someone's pushing on your inner thighs. Oh my goodness. Err. And release. Trying again. You have to really be focused here. That's what I love about this. Okay, now just take a moment and flutter your wings. You can't rush transformation, right? You can't, cr you can't open the chrysalis and like dig out the butterfly. You got to give it some time. We are a work in progress, not always knowing 
we may be in the mushy stage. You know, they pretty much turn to liquid inside of there and then retransform. Bring your knees together. Let's rock and roll. Okay, we're going to rock and roll a few times. So front to back. They don't know what's going on. They're just trusting in the process. Exhale, rocking back. Inhale, rocking up. Now as you rock back, I want you to rock back. And as you rock up, bring your right foot in front and your left shin in close to you. Okay? You're going to rock back. Right shin's going to stay in front. Left shin's behind. Now this might be plenty. Some of you, we're going to use a little bit more momentum. We're going to come up on the shin, starting to really wake those hips up. Rock back. Inhale, rock up. Bring your arms by your side. So you come all the way up on that left shin. Exhale, rock back. Inhale, rock up. Being able to stand up from laying down, right? That's a skill. Rock up. And you can start to feel that outer left hip. Woo! Rock back. Right shin, whole time. We're not switching. Coming up. And my heel lifts a little bit. That's fine. If yours is doing that, or you could just step forward a little more. Lift. Let's do two more. Rock back. This also is a great movement to bring in some energy. Rock back. Rock up. Good. Okay. Rock back. Left foot is in front and you're just setting it down. You're staying right here. This is good. Rock back. Rock up. All right. You know where we're going. I got to wiggle back a little bit. Rock back. A little more momentum. You're up on right shin. Rock back. Exhale. Inhale. Rock up. Exhale. Rock back. Inhale. Rock up. Rock back. Rock up. One more, yogis. Rock back. Rock up. Very good. Okay. Come on down. Come to seated. All right. Left shin. I want you to put your left shin in front. Someone was just there. And right leg's going to go back to deer shape. So you've got two 90-90s. Your left ankle is in line with left knee. Right left knee is in line with hip. Back knee is in line with back hip. And then you got to scooch that ankle out just a little bit. Good. Now take a breath here. Inhale, lift your chest. And I'm just going to take my right hand, hold my left shin, and we're going to take a twist here just for a moment to the left. Push your inner back leg down into the ground. Good. And then come back around. Good. Come back around. Now, I'm going to start with my hands down. This is a difficult movement in my hips. I'm going to start with my hands down in front of my, sh one is in front of the shin, one's kind of off to the side. You're going to lean forward woo, and see if you can pick your back leg up and then set it down. Inhale, smile, exhale, lift. You're on candid camera. Again, an oldie but a goodie. Inhale, lift. It's like a prank. Lift. Inhale. Now, much more challenging in my body to bring your hands to the heart. Exhale. Lift. Oh, goodness. Inhale. Who's with me? Exhale. Inhale. Like, is my leg lifting? It's like dead weight back there. Lift. Lean forward. You are leaning forward. Lift one more time. Exhale. Okay. Set that leg down. Very good. Hands back in front of you. Start to walk yourself forward, maybe even a little more on the diagonal. So you're towards, your torso is towards your left knee. Stretch your heart forward. And then you're back to the hypnotic. Yes. Yeah, so maybe you move a little side to side. Imagine that right inner thigh, the whole top of the thigh rolling towards the floor just a little bit more. Good, and walk yourself up. All right, now we're going to do these little windshield wipers, hands to the heart, and you're just going to rock side to side, side to side. Now, if it's too much with the hands at the heart, you can do it with the hands behind you, okay? Side to side, couple times. I move all over on my mat on this one. Last time, now you're going to end to the other direction. So now right shin, so you're likely to the back of your mat. Two 90-90s, deer pose. This side is really excited because it's knowing what's happening. 
We're in this together, Kula. We, we're in it together. All right, you ready? I'm going to start with my hands down. Lift the chest, breathe in, and we're going to add that little twist. Left hand, hold your right shin. Turn and twist to the right. Really lift up through the spine. Feel cobra in your upper body. Revolve your torso to the right. Good, and then back around. Again, I'm gonna start with the first couple on my hands on the ground. Inhale here. Lean forward a little bit. Pick your back leg up. Inhale. Exhale, lift. Inhale. Now maybe some of you, you lift the hands off the heart or bring the hands to the heart lift them off the ground lift inhale exhale inhale leg down now again you're trying not to drop the leg down you can see my heel starting to scooch in close it's hard to keep the architecture of that shape back there and lift last two lean and lift back to center last time lift and lower good i can also really feel it in the side waist on that one breathe in start to turn your torso towards the right knee and begin to fold down forearms down heart forward i already feel like i have two new hips i mean i'm just saying <laughs> All right, take one more breath and bring it back up. All right, now if you, actually let's do a couple windshield wipers one more time, we'll end back around. So hands to heart or hands behind you, side to side. Good, and back around to the front of your mat, plant your hands and step yourself back, tabletop pose. Good, tuck your toes. Lift your knees and let's find our way downward facing dog. Good. Now take both your feet. They should be about hip width apart here and windshield wiper both heels to the right. And get into that outer left leg here a bit. Outer left hip. Inhale center, heels over to the left. And again, push into both of those hands. Really stretch up and back through the hips, the outer right hip. Good, now come to center. Step your right foot just about six inches forward. Keep it in the same line and see if you can sink that heel down. Let your left heel really lift. And you're again gonna hopefully notice maybe some sensation going down either the hamstring, maybe the IT band. And bring that right foot back, step the left foot up. Really stamp down. Imagine you could just lift into a down dog kick right here with that right leg coming off the ground. Really stand into that foot. It gets into the calf even and everything. All connected, right? It's all connected. Step the leg back. Inhale, heart forward, breathe in. Exhale, lower all the way to the belly. Good, bring your left forearm out in front of you. Bend your right knee, reach back and catch your right foot with your right hand half frog pose you're just you know warming up that thigh you don't have to go too deep here just warming up that leg for a moment good and then let that foot go bring your forearms out into sphinx yep and take your right leg flex your foot and take the right foot out to the right just a little bit it probably won't go very far bring the leg back to center and now see if, as you're gazing forward or down to the floor, you can lift your right thigh up. <laughs> again, I'm like, did it lift? It did. Good, you can't really see it. Set it down. Do this again. Take the right knee, right foot out to the right, not the knee, just the shin and foot. Back to center. Keep pushing into the top of your left foot. Pick the right leg up and lower it down. Good. Stretch that right leg back. Shake your hips out just a little bit. All right, switching sides, right forearm, kind of diagonal it across. If this is too intense, you can come down forehead on the back of the forearm, left hand, left foot, half frog, waking up the quad, which is also part of the hip. Yeah, 
hips just aren't outer hips. They're inner groins, they're hamstrings, they're quads. It's all the things. Okay. Let go of the foot, forearms back down. I like to look more down here. If you're a little more open in the chest, you might prefer looking forward and that's fine. Engage that right leg, right kneecap lifts. Let your left leg, left shin and foot go off to the left. Hmm. And then bring it back to center. And then see if you can push into the top of that right foot and lift the thigh a bit on the left and set it down. It's kind of like a, an illusion, like is the leg lifting? I'm not exactly sure, left leg out to the left. It is. And back to center and lift the leg up and set it down. What's really happening, really waking up the hamstring, stretch both legs back, left leg back, right leg back. Take a moment, wiggle your hips out, sphinx pose, lift your chest. Good, slide your hands back next to your rib cage, tuck your toes. And we're gonna come up through plank from the ground. What I want you to imagine, now if that's not gonna happen today for you, you're just gonna use your knees. I want you to imagine you're doing cobra right now. So lift your upper back so your back wakes up a little bit. Lift your shoulder heads, draw your rib cage away from the floor and start to push away from the floor. And then you're gonna go all the way back to the floor. Lower, exhale. Lift your shoulder heads up, imagine cobra, toes stay tucked. Exhale, push away from the floor. Yeah, this is not easy. You're doing amazing, lower. <laughs> One more, little bit of the yang here. Lift the shoulder heads like the rock and rolls. Okay, push. Push, I'm, I'm on the struggle bus on that one too. Push, and down dog, exhale. For some reason that feels helpful, right? When other people, you're like, other people have to be struggling too. Yes, friends, you are not alone. Down dog. Good. I want you to bend your right knee. Let that left heel sink and get a little heavy. Push into your left hand and take your right hand to your outer left leg and turn. Now let this right knee bend to help you kind of twist. In fact, the right knee can come a little bit towards your right elbow. Maybe you'll feel it in the outer hip a little more. And then switch, right hand down. Now your left knee is going to bend. Let the right heel sink. Push into that right hand, left hand. Bring it to your outer right calf or foot and start to twist. I'm gonna let the left knee move a little more towards my left elbow as I revolve open. And then left hand back. Lift your heels, breathe in. Slowly walk forward towards the top of your mat, Uttanasana. Stretch the spine forward, breathe in. Exhale, fold and bow, shake the head out. Reverse your swan dive, breathe in, reach up. Hands to heart, exhale. Nice job, yogis. Now, you might want a block here for a moment. Just have it at the top of your mat in case you want it. Inhale, reach the arms to the sky. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, right leg's gonna step back into a lunge. Good, stay on the fingertips, gaze forward, stretch the front of the hip flexor, maybe even drop the back knee if that gives you more stretch. Inhale, look forward. And then exhale, lift the back knee, step back, down dog. Plank pose as you breathe in. Exhale, you can go chaturanga or to the belly. Up dog, cobra. Exhale, down dog. Right leg reaches up, breathe in. Right foot, step it towards your left thumb, your left thumb. Here's where a block might be helpful. You can bring the block on the outside of the foot and both hands on the block. Inhale, heart forward. Keep the back knee up this time. And then long pyramid pose, exhale. Now in this form, because the feet are like on a tight rope, they're both in the same line. Inhale, rebend. You're gonna get a little more into the IT band, hopefully, and your outer hip. IT band is along the outer part of the right leg. Straighten the front leg. One more time, breathe in. Gaze forward, and if you're not getting stretch, you can always drop this back knee down. I want you to get hip stretch here. Exhale, stretch.
straighten that front leg. Good. Rebend the leg. Scooch the block forward. Push off. Slide your left foot behind your right foot. Pinkies touch. Inhale, heart forward. Exhale, fold and bow. Plant your right hand underneath your chest. Bend the right knee. Keep looking down. Left arm reaches up. Good. Take a nice deep breath. Breathe in. Good. Exhale. Top hand down. Unwind your back foot. Inhale. Heart forward. Exhale. Fold and bow. Reverse your swan dive. Maybe a little back bend at the top. Open up. Fold back down. Exhale. Inhale. Lengthen. And now your left foot will step back. Lunge. Stay on your fingertips. Maybe drop the back knee down for the breath. Inhaling. Plant your hands. Lift the knee if it's down. Exhale, down dog. Plank pose. Inhale. Chaturanga. Exhale. Up dog, cobra. Down dog. Exhale. Left leg rises. Inhale. Left foot to right thumb. Grab the blocks. You've got a bit of a twist here. You kind of have to move the belly out of the way over to the left side. Inhale, bend into that left leg. Mm. Exhale, straighten the front leg. Keep pushing into your left big toe mound. Inhale, bend. Now, if it's too much with both hands on the outside, you can just frame your hands around that front foot. You could have one block actually on each side. Last time, breathe in. Breathe out. Akula is a group of people. Inhale, bend. Scooch the block forward. Push off. Right foot behind left foot. Inhale, heart forward. Left hand down. Keep looking down at the left hand. Left leg is bent. Right arm up. Akula is a group of people who support each other, who appreciate our differences. Arm to sky. Take another breath. Exhale, top hand down. Unwind your legs. Inhale, heart forward. Exhale, fold and bow. Good. Bend your knees. Sink your hips. Chair pose. Utkatasana. Reach your arms up. Good. Now put your weight in your right foot. Pick your left heel up. And you're going to take a figure four. Bring your hands to your heart. Very good. Flex your foot. See so if you can get your ankle bone just outside your knee. And then reach your arms out wide like wings. Sink your hips back. Stretch your heart forward. Inhale. Now either airplane your arms back as you exhale or sweep them forward. Inhale, reach them out to the side. And either sweep them back or forward. One more time. Inhale. Exhale. Hands to heart, knee to chest. Inhale, come up to stand. Left knee is into your chest. Exhale, lean forward, land the ball of the foot, crescent pose. Inhale, reach your arms up towards the sky. Good, take a breath. I need to lengthen my stance just a little, and you may need to too. Sometimes when we take that step back, it isn't enough when you land. It isn't enough space, so adjust if you need to. Good. Hands down to the floor inside your front leg. Skandasana. Heels in. Toes out. Bend your back leg, your left leg, and straighten your front leg. Hmm. <laughs> Having extra sound effects today. Feels good. It is hypnotic. It's a, it rained here this morning. We needed it so bad. And it's a little M-O-I-S-T outside right now. <laughs> can only use that word when we're talking about cake. All right, take one more breath. And wind yourself back to the front of your mat. Back heel lifts up, step to plank. If you want to skip chaturanga as you exhale, press to down dog. Otherwise, lower. Up dog, cobra. Breathe in. Down dog, exhale. Inhale, heels rise. Exhale, bend your knees, look forward. You could step or float. 
Inhale, we send the heart forward. Exhale, fold and bow. Bend your knees, sink your hips, chair pose, utkatasana. With a song, left, <laughs> weight in your left foot, hands to heart. Pick your right heel up. Pigeon prep, standing pigeon prep. Hmm, my balance. My balance, I gotta get my balance here today. All right, as you inhale, reach your arms out wide. As you exhale, either stretch them back or reach them forward. Inhale, arms out to the sides. Exhale, back or forward. Again, inhale. Exhale. Transition, hands to the heart, knee to the chest, breathe in. Bend your standing leg, lean forward, big step back, crescent pose. Arms circle up, inhale. Good, take a couple breaths, breathing in. Breathing out. Adjust your stance if you need to. Pull your back heel a little bit more over the ball of the foot. Feel that energy move up your back leg to your pelvis, to your hips. Knit your front ribs in. Exhale, hands to the ground. Inside that front foot, heels in. Now it's right leg bend, skandasana. Now if you can't go all the way down, should have set this on the first side, you can just come right here, right forearm on your right leg, left leg straight. Otherwise, some of you will come down. Some of you will even be able to get your right heel to sink all the way down. Take a couple breaths. Can you feel each other's energy? Just take a moment. We become the company that we keep, so it's very important to keep good company. Good, circle back around to the front of your mat, stepping to plank as you inhale. Exhale, chaturanga, or pressing again back to downward facing dog. Breath in, breath out. Lift your heels, inhale. Bend your knees, look forward, step or float. Top of your mat. Half high, inhale, fold and bow, exhale. Good, now I want you to stay in your fold. I'm gonna grab my block, again, it's optional. You're gonna bring it underneath your right hand, right, right hand, which is under your right shoulder, and your left hand is gonna come to your hip. We're gonna lift our torso up so it's parallel to the floor, to the earth, and we're gonna stand into that right foot. So one of the movements of the hip, besides flexing and extending that we've done, and we've abducted and adducted a lot in the floor work when we started, is we can internally and externally rotate the, the hip. So I want you to take your leg back, starting with the leg internally rotated, the toes are pointing down. Good. And now you're gonna turn the toes to the left like you're doing half moon. We're externally rotating. Lift the leg. The hips start to open like you're doing a warrior two, right? And then turn the toes down as though you're doing warrior one, crescent pose. So you're going to do that a couple times. Inhale, turn, block is optional, exhale, rotate. Now what's fascinating, or I think is fascinating, in my personal body, where I actually start to feel this is not in the leg that's doing all the internal and external rotation, it's the standing leg that I really feel the, the effort. Now, that might be today, could be different on a different day. Inhale, turn the toes. Exhale, turn the toes down. Last time, you got this. Inhale, exhale. Very good, okay, set that down. <gasps> All right, add a sound effect of your choice now that that is over. <laughs> Bend your left knee, straighten your right leg as you fold. Stretch through that outer. Mm. And we're back to hypnotic. <laughs> mm. Take another breath. 
Now you don't have to do the other side. And you're like, what? That's right, you don't have to. You get to, all right? You get to do the other side. It's a gift. All right, stand into that left foot. I'm not messing around here though. Language plays a big role, right? Oh my God, I have to do the other side. No, you get to do the other side. Think how your body is going to respond differently, how you're going to breathe differently. Lift your right leg up, turning the toes towards the floor. Stretch the heart forward. And then you're going to turn the toes out. You'll notice the upper body goes with you. Exhale, rotate the toes down language, right? That language that we speak, the relationship, toes out, breathe in, that we have with ourselves. Exhale, rotating down. Inhale. What if we could pass that on to our kids? What if we could pass that on to our friends to create a better relationship with themselves? Inhale, to know their own worthiness. Exhale. Oh, this last one is something here, isn't it? Inhale. That fifth one is a kicker. Literally. Okay. Bend your standing leg to help you L gently lower that right foot down. All right. Keep that left leg bent. I'm sorry. Straighten that left leg. Bend your right knee and work Ooh, a little stretch it out through that outer left hip. Take another breath. Good. Inhale, heart forward. Exhale, fold and bow. Reverse your swan dive. Inhale, rise. Come all the way up. Hands to the heart. Exhale. Are you feeling these hypnotic vibes that we've got going? If you can't feel the vibration, I... I cued the train to come to give us a little extra. Mm. All right, here we go. We're winding down now. Reach arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lengthen. Step your left foot back. World's greatest stretch. Left hand down, low lunge twist, AKA low lunge twist, right arm to the sky. Bend into that right leg. Keep the back leg strong as you squeeze your inner thighs together and take your outer right hip back. Drop the back knee down, thigh stretch. Right hand is gonna keep reaching back. Remember, engage your leg. Think about the leg bending before you actually grab it. It will hopefully help not have so many um, Charlie horses. Now you could stay in the twist, or I invite you, you could use your block if you need to, to come down on your left forearm. Turn your torso towards the floor and really draw the heel in tight towards your glute. Keep hugging your right knee towards your right armpit or towards your right shoulder. Allow your pelvis to drop a little deeper and your heart to stretch another inch forward. Let go of that foot. Walk your hands up. Pick the right foot up and slide it in front of your left leg and you're coming to go mukasana. Now you could do this yogis laying down on your back. If this doesn't work for you, I'm gonna turn and face you and sit back in between your heels. If you can't sit back, then you'll grab that block and sit on the block. Lift your chest, inhale. And as you exhale, maybe the feet start to scooch away from you just a little bit more away from your hips. Take another breath. Now, if you're not sitting on your block, I encourage you to bring it in front of you. And as you fold forward, let your third eye rest. Couple of breaths here. Maybe you lower the block and go a little deeper. Maybe you walk your arms out in front of you.
walk your hands back in. Slowly start to lift your chest up. Okay, you remember that movement where we rock back? Okay, so right leg is in front. That'll be the leg that initiates it. Rock back, rock up, and then slowly just step yourself back, down dog. Now, if you wanted to take the vinyasa, you certainly can. Left leg up, left foot to the left hand, low lunge twist, left arm to the sky, right hand could have a block under it. You squeeze your feet together and you feel the energy move from the feet up the legs, maybe all the way to your pelvis, to your hips, and squeeze the upper inner thighs together a little more. That back shin hugs in so that you can move the outer left hip back and lay the top part of your chest back a little more as well. Drop your back knee down. Keep twisting in the same direction for the thigh stretch. Right hand, that is my left hand. Left hand is going to reach back for your right foot. Now you can stay in this twisted monkey form or turn. I'm going to switch the grip of my hand on my foot and turn your torso towards the floor. Maybe come onto the forearm. You could also stay up on the hand. Now, to the degree that you let the pelvis start to come down a little bit more, it starts to get quite interesting. As we move off the mat, when we complete our practice, we remember this teaching of Akula and that as we see each other, as we see one another in the world, we remember the connection. And when we remember that, it maybe starts to shift our language, let go of the foot with the way that we speak to one another. Slide that left leg now in front of the right leg. It may change up the choices that we make, Gomukhasana. Sometimes I think we often, from the ego's point, we just, we react really quickly sometimes. Lift your chest, exhale if there's room to fold. And this practice, any contemplative or meditative practice is there as a tool to help us learn to slow down a little bit. To notice the great pause. Where is this coming from? Where is this thought or action coming from? Is it coming from a place of love or is it coming from a space of pe fear and trying to protect something? Even feel it in your hips and the way that you breathe right now. Are you breathing in a way that you're surrendering into the pose? Or are you still holding on and trying to protect yourself in this moment? Sometimes that means backing off a little bit. Backing off of the outer pose so that internally you can become more connected. And that's a really important thing to remember in the practice. Also in our life, right? So sometimes trying to soften some of what's going on in the outer world so that you can listen a little bit more acutely to the deeper inner voice, the, the deeper one. Let's inhale, slowly come up. Lean back, slide your legs out in front of you. Give your legs a shake. Good. Take your hand behind the back of your right leg. Marichyasana, right leg is going to cross over your left. You take your right hand behind you. Inhale, lift your left arm to the sky. And then today, you could either hook your elbow around the leg, chest nice and tall, or you could bring it to the outside. It's totally up to you. If my back rounds as the arm comes to the outside, then I'm losing the integrity of the alignment, which is 
not actually very helpful in our spine to twist with a rounded back. We want the spine, first and foremost, to have a nice straight plumb line, just like Tadasana, just like Mountain Pose. Inhale, unwind. Now take the same foot, the right leg that's bent, bring it to the inside. Right arm to the sky, and this time right hand either can reach towards the inside of your foot or reach it around on the front of the shin, reach back and clasp and hold your own hand and bow your forehead. Hug your right knee in towards your right armpit. There's a lot that's happening in this pose and everybody will feel this a little differently. Some of us are gonna note it more in our left hamstring. Some of us are gonna feel it more in our upper back or even our lower back, the stretch there. So just noticing, paying attention instead of feeling like it should be this or it has to be that or it's supposed to be, just noticing what is. Good, inhale, release your bind. If you've got the bind, take the same right leg one last time and right knee on top of left knee in a half Gomukhasana. Your left leg is straight now, your spine nice and tall. Reach this right hand towards your outer left foot if it will go. And maybe cross your left hand over that to the inside. Now, if you need a little support, grab your blocks. Probably the tallest height will be the most helpful because your forearms can kind of squeeze and hold it. Good. And then lift your forehead off. I'm going to take my block off. Keep the right hand holding on and sweep your left arm behind you. And noticing the movement of the gaze of the torso, how that starts to change perhaps where you're feeling the stretch now in your physical body. Just like a change in perspective or a change in what our attention is going toward changes in our real life too. Good, inhale, unwind, come back around. Exhale, stretch your right leg out straight. Give your legs a little shake. All right, left leg, Marichyasana crossing over first, that variation, left hand behind, right arm reaching up. Exhale, either hooking the elbow or bringing it to the outside. Flex your right toes, point the toes to the sky. Inhale, exhale turning the navel towards your left inner thigh. Good, inhale, unwind. Exhale, same leg that's bent is now just gonna come to the inside of uh, your right leg, right hand beside you, left arm up. Exhale, left hand sweeps towards your inner foot and then right hand can hold as well. Or you're gonna reach the left arm in front of your left shin, right hand sweeps behind you. And forward fold. Keep hugging the left knee in towards your left armpit. Push your inner arm on the left against that shin to help you stretch your heart more forward. So it's really easy for the back to round quite a lot here. Do your best. Push into that left upper arm to help you stretch your heart forward, lengthening the heart away from the pelvis, stretching your forehead forward. Gaze is down. Inhale, come up. Take your right hand, hold that left ankle, sweep it across half go mukasana. Lift your chest up nice and tall. And left hand is gonna reach towards your outer right foot. And if it can't reach, you just hold your shin. And then maybe right leg or right hand crosses over that. Again, you could grab your block if you wanted it. Some days it's too much to grab the foot and I have the hands just alongside my calf and that's totally okay.
And then keep holding on if you've got the left outer foot or the ankle or shin and sweep your right arm back behind you. Open up the chest. Very good. Inhale, come back around. Exhale, slide that left leg out. Good. Make sure your block is handy. Scoot yourself to the middle of your mat. Come all the way down onto your back. Make sure if you have a strap that it's also near you. And we're gonna come into a supported bridge pose. So I'm gonna encourage you, um, just put it on the lowest setting to start here. And then stretch your legs out if it feels okay in your low back. So that's why I always, I do this one on the lowest height. I feel like it can be a little intense, but if you know your body enjoys a higher setting of the block, feel free to heighten yourself up. You let your toes flop open. Stretching the front of those hip flexors. And we really have worked the whole circumference of the hip. We did some different groin things in Skandasana and that beginning work opening up in butterfly in the Bhattakonasana. We worked the front of the hip and the crescents and the lunges and the quads. And then the internal external rotation. <coughs> we worked the outer glutes. Bend your knees, bring your feet in. And if you're like, we're gonna take a supported shoulder stand and I'm gonna use my strap for this one where I'm gonna put it around the balls of my feet. This is totally optional. You can just have your legs up. I'm gonna bring my arms by my sides so that my upper arms are connected to the ground. You also could straighten your arms if that's more comfortable. I want your arms to have to do as little work here as possible. So I like the straight arm variation. Well, by using the strap, we're just giving ourselves a sense of a little bit of grounding. The practice gives us this opportunity to connect into our true nature the stillness that lies within. If you feel like you're gripping the strap, you also could loop your strap around your hands so maybe they're not working so hard. You don't have a strap or a block you could be doing real legs up the wall so just bringing your body over to a wall and letting your legs slide up the wall you don't need any props for that you can put a a blanket or a towel under the sacrum if you like And then bend your knees in towards your chest. Slide that strap off. Set your feet back down to the floor. Perhaps you notice a little bit of tingling or movement happening through the legs, through the feet. It might feel uh, a little bit heated. Push down into your feet, lift your hips, slide your block out. Hug your knees in towards your chest, give yourself a squeeze. And extend the legs out, Shavasana. 
Turn your palms up, close your eyes, let your feet flop open. If it's helpful, you could invite in now again that mantra of Sat Nam. The mantra of being able to express ourselves in the way that only each of us can. And also reminding us that we are connected to all that there is. And for the universe to be complete, each of our vibrations is needed. So as you take these next couple of minutes, imagining the mantra, again, only if it's helpful, sat, rising up through your spine, activating the frequency of each of your chakras, nam, Feeling that sound current extending out around us, increasing our own vibration, extending it out to our Kula community. As you hear the sound of the bell end, allow the mantra to dissolve with it. Start to come back by moving your fingers and your toes. Reach your arms up and over your head. Take a big full body stretch. Bend your knees, connect your feet to the earth, and roll to your right side. And let's slowly start to come back up. Bring your palms together in front of your heart. It has been such an honor to practice with every one of you. 
to have each and every one of you and your own uniqueness be a part of this kula. Our uniqueness and yet our collective consciousness as we all have raised not only our own vibrations, but that of the world. From my heart to yours, as we say namaste, may we remember that the love and the light that lives inside of me sees and acknowledges that which lives inside of you. As we draw thumbs to third eye, namaste.